back here on the John Ford K Show, sponsored each week by Veterans Ford. We're going to do a second segment on some of the top pass rush defensive end outside linebackers and also defensive tackles. And you talk about a major need for the Saints, both of them, be able to rush the quarterback and also help stop the run. So we'll take a look at my list of the top, and that's going to be a ton of them right off the top. My top-rated player overall, Leonard Williams, a big defensive tackle from Southern Cal. Randy Gregory, stand-up defensive end, outside linebacker from Nebraska. Shane Ray, similar fashion, Missouri. Dante Fowler Jr., who's a favorite of mine, University of Florida. And Danny Shelton, the huge nose tackle from University of Washington. And we throw it to Vic Beasley, uh, defensive end, outside linebacker. He's from uh, Clemson, Clemson, not correct, Oklahoma. Correct. Alvin Bud Dupree, the defensive end, outside linebacker from Kentucky. Eddie Goldman, defensive tackle from Florida State. Eric Armstead, the uh, long rangy defensive end from Oregon. Malcolm Brown, a big run stuffer, defensive tackle from University of Texas. And we'll continue with our list. Oh, maybe we won't. Uh, we so we'll, we'll go with uh, also Jordan Phillips, another yeah. big defensive tackle from University of Oklahoma. Uh, but on this on that list, John, what I think you see is some of what we're going to. Okay, you want to start all over? Welcome back to the John Ford K Show, sponsored each week by Veterans Ford. It's our second segment this week on the top players for the 2015 NFL Draft. And this uh, coming segment, we're talking about pass rush, defensive end, outside linebackers, also defensive tackles, two huge areas of need for the New Orleans Saints. So we'll show you my list of the top 15 right off the top. My top rated player for the 2015 NFL Draft, Leonard Williams, defensive tackle from Southern Cal. Randy Gregory, defensive end from Nebraska. Shane Ray from Missouri. And one of my favorites, Dante Fowler Jr., University of Florida. Danny Shelton, a huge nose tackle from University of Washington. Then we go with Vic Beasley, defensive end, outside linebacker from Clemson. Bud Dupree, did another defensive end, outside linebacker, Kentucky. Eddie Goldman, a big defensive tackle from Florida State. Long and rangy, Eric Olmstead from Oregon. Malcolm Brown, the big run stuffer from University of Texas. Jordan Phillips, a uh, big defensive tackle from Oklahoma. Nate Archer, pass rush defensive end from Utah. This is a guy, John, and I hope they draft him, man. So that way you'll be able to say that name all over and over. Anabwe Oduzawe, defensive end from UCLA. Daniel Hunter, defensive end from LSU. And Michael Bennett, uh, defensive tackle from Ohio State. If you look at all 15 of those names, all those guys will be off the board in the top 64 picks. Wow. So you're talking about a big run on defensive linemen this year. Everybody's looking to get a quarterback. I think that's going to be a big drop from those two top guys to which you're going to see the number three spot. Wide receivers, cornerbacks, pass rush, defensive ends, defensive tackles are going to dominate in the first two rounds. Well, Mike, the old days, 
a lot of teams looking for running backs early. But because of the way the NFL established themselves by a passing league, how do you stop the guys? DBs and pass rushers. You got to have pass rushers. There's a flock of them on that roster right there that we just saw. I think that there's a chance that the Saints could hold tight and get one of these good ball players. There's a bunch of them that will fall down to 13th. The Saints got a golden opportunity. Do they want an inside guy or an outside guy? They got to have one to rush from the outside who can also drop back maybe and, and play a little pass coverage. There's a flock of them in there, and I know you know as well as I do that somebody on that roster they got to go ahead and go after. You know, one of the things, uh, maybe one guy, people saying, well, how come Shaq Thompson? He'll be on our list next week because we were looking at the pass rushers. Right. Shaq is more of a guy, hybrid player, and I'm not real sure what's his best position in the NFL. He kind of played a little bit outside linebacker, strong safety, running back all across the board at Washington. But his teammate, Danny Shelton, you know about a guy who's 6'2", 330 pounds, uh, and that's when he hasn't eaten a meal. I mean, he's a guy that you're talking about a, a Vince Wolfer type player. Danny Shelton's that. But two names to watch Saints wise. And one would be Vic Beasley. Yes. The defensive and outside linebacker from Clemson. The other guy, Bud Dupree, Kentucky. who also played kind of a hybrid position at University of Kentucky. I think those three, I think Shelton's off the board by the time the Saints pick. But those two pass rush defensive and outside linebackers are two players that I do believe will be in that area of vicinity of when the Saints pick at 13. Well, the question is, what are they looking for? Are they looking for a guy who can stand up and rush the quarterback? That's what three, that's four what they defense have, that's, is about. That's what they have to have, which I don't understand why I'm looking. A lot of times you're seeing Junior Gallette putting his hand on the ground and rushing from that standpoint. Uh, you want a guy like that? Great. You can get yourself a defensive end type. If you want a hybrid guy who can stand up, make some things happen, that's what the Beasleys, you know, I know he was down in college, but most college kids are down because they can beat, you know, players. But in a pro ball, if you're at 6'6", 240, you want to be up. You want to be rangy, make some moves. And with him, uh, I think that's my pick. I'd like to see him go get Beasley. Uh, I think, you know, Dupree could be another guy. Uh, but if you're standing up, being able, and then they can drop him. You know, guys that, that rangy can drop and cover it, maybe running backs or a tight end. We shall see. But don't go and get yourself a big 320-pound guy and expect him to be an outside pass rusher. It ain't going to happen, Mike. Those guys are the inside guys. You want the, the hybrid guys on the outside. Because this is a league built around having a great quarterback and putting that quarterback on his keys. Yes. I mean, so you got to find guys that can cause havoc on a field. And when you look at this Saints football team, defensively, does any of Name those players give out. you, uh, you know, cause for concern if you're putting up a game plan that you say that guy got to take care of? The one thing that you look at on both Super Bowl teams you got players that concern you when you when they hit the field against them offensively and defensively. But the Saints, it's all on offense. Correct. Those guys concern you when you got a Drew Brees, a Jimmy Graham, a Marcus Colston. Those players concern you. Defensively, though, you don't have a one guy you spending a lot of time at night saying, man, you know, that guy really, really troubles me defensively. Hey, being a former quarterback, I can vouch for this. When I was going into our meetings, we had our list. If you played the 49ers back in the day, Charles Haley. Uh, you had guys with Minnesota. You had to take care of, you know, the, the Browner. You had to take care of, you know, the other players, Reggie White. So they stand out at you. These players stand out. Nobody in the Saints stand out when these guys go up and go, oh, we play the New Orleans Saints. Okay, let's just put our game plan together. We don't fear anybody on defense. And you got to start getting players that people fear on defense. The other thing, too, is because of the salary cap issue, Broderick Bunkley, either he's going to have to take a major pay cut yeah. or he's not going to be on this football team. Last year, we saw with John Jenkins a little bit of the John Jenkins we saw at Georgia. Inconsistent. He was heavy. He was coming off of an injury. That concerns me that somewhere in this draft class early, you better get your big man in the middle. Well, let me ask you, what about Hicks? Can you not put him in the middle? Can, you, can he not play the nose guard type situation? Well, that's something four? that he hasn't played. He's played inside in a 4-3 four, three a four, alignment. 4-3. Three. Well, they, they, don't, they do a little bit of 4-3. I mean, we've seen him do 4-3 here in the New Orleans Saints. But you don't waste – I feel this. You don't waste a first pick on a nose guard. You go get you a rush guy, and you find someone later. I think the one guy that would be the exception to the rule here would be Shelton. Because when you look at last year – he was double digits in tackles for losses at Washington, had nine quarterback sacks. You talk about a guy that was tipping the scales at 340 pounds. So you know what? He was whipping the stew out of that center right up front. He scares you. When you see the NFL, Halotinata, Vince Wilford, 
Those type guys you don't see a lot of. And so I think when you get a guy who's special that way, you take him early. That's what I think will happen with Danny Shelton. Well, if he's available at 13 and he, you decide on him and a pass specialist from the outside, uh, it's a good, good, good problem to be in when you got that guy sitting there. And you, know, you probably can't go wrong if you don't take him. You take an outside pass rusher, or you do, do take him. And you forget the pass rusher. Maybe you catch a pass rusher in round two. I think one of the things too is pass rushers get always overdrafted. Yes. Always get kicked and up. They also get overpaid after one year of doing well because I played with a guy who got money and then, then they shipped him out a year later because he went down off that cliff. Well, we see it each and every year, and that's why Danielle Hunter, who hasn't put up great stats at LSU, he's going to end up being a top 50 pick in this draft class. A lot more here on the John 4K Show, sponsored each week by Veterans Ford. We'll be right back.